Before I get started my watercolor again, I'm just going to take it and roll it back on itself just to flatten it out a little bit. So after it's completely dry, I just roll it back both vertically and horizontally. It just kind of helps to flatten a little bit and then it lays flat. <clears throat> I'm going to start with a small number five brush. I want a little bit of uh, detail, so I want a little smaller brush to work with. In my palette, I'm going to use a little bit of phthalo blue and a little bit of lizard and crimson just to make a real dark purple, almost a black. I don't use blacks in my palettes. I mix really rich purples. I'm just going to start with my rooster here. This is my rooster shape. Getting nice and dark in those areas. I want to make him nice and dark up against that chicken coop. I pin in enough roosters that I know the shape of them pretty well. Get his chest nice and dark. Always just grabbing a little bit of paint. A little bit darker paint. Pull it around a little bit. Dry my brush a little bit. I'm going to start with a little bit of lemon yellow. Just put a little bit of yellow into him on his wings there. A little bit in his beak. He's really crowing, so I want him nice, some nice yellow on his beak there. Just real, real, real small strokes with my small brush. A little bit of lizard and crimson again. I do his his comb now and a nice red. Maybe a little bit of cadmium red. Let's grab a little bit of cadmium red as well and make it nice bright red. Just a few little dots for his comb. All right, a little more lemon yellow. More lemon yellow on his beak there. A little bit more lemon yellow. I do his legs nice and yellow. I kind of like the that look of the yellow up on his beak and then the yellow down on his legs again as well. Kind of bounces that yellow around a little bit. All right, I'm going to switch to my larger brush. I've got some bigger areas I want to do. And I, I want to use as large a brush as I possibly can. So here I'm going to work a little bit of phthalo blue. Want to get the inside of that door just a little bit darker and I kind of want to bounce that dark color of him around a little bit just to kind of uh, just to lead the eye around His, he's the main focal point but I need some other darks around just to kind of balance him a little bit up here on the top of my roof my where my roof is darkest up there the side is on the shadow side so I want a nice shadow in here on your second wash, you want to make sure that you don't overwork it too much. Get in, lay your color down, and then kind of pull the color around a little bit and then just soften it up, soften up those edges a little bit. Try not to go over what you just laid down. You'll have a fresher looking watercolor if you do that. You can blot some of that back a little bit. I always have a paper towel in my hand. I just kind of blot things back a little bit. Nice shadow underneath the uh, windowsill. A little detail into it, just add a little bit more depth to it, soften up those outside lines. A 
I'm gonna start with a little bit of cerulean blue. Come back in. I'm gonna turn the shadow side uh, of the fascia boards a little bit of blue. They're in the shadow side, so they'd have a little bit of a shadow on them. The front's gonna be a little bit lighter, but the sides, the shadow side would have a little bit of shadow on them. So I'm gonna use a little bit of cerulean blue for that. Mix up my dark again. It's got a little bit of phthalo blue into it. a nice dark shadow under that far corner. Blot it back a little bit if it's too dark. I always have a paper towel in my hand just to kind of blot things back out, lighten things up. A little bit darker areas in those recesses, those corners of those windows. You can see how that just kind of pops that dark around a little bit more. Again, going back to my dark colors, just basically a lizard, lizard crimson and thalo blue. So a nice rich shadow underneath that roof line. Bring it down a little bit further. I'm gonna rinse my brush, dry it a little bit. Just pull that dark off just a little bit. Again, if it gets too dark, just back it off a little bit with your paper towel. Blot it out just a little bit. Grab a little bit more thalo blue. A little bit of my lemon yellow to make it a real dark green. Come back in, I'm just putting some shadows coming off those grasses in the front and things. And this is just to break up these big shapes in the front and just to darken up those areas a little bit. Pull your darks around a little bit, balance them out. A little more thalo blue to my mix, darkening it up a little bit more. Come in nice and dark against that shadow side now. Watercolors are a layering process. You're just going a little bit darker, a little bit darker, a little bit darker as you go. Soften up that edge a little bit. Soften up this edge a little bit. So I have a hard edge up against the roof line and then I soften the edge down the walls a little bit. Now that side really looks like it's in shadow. You can see how these darks just really make your watercolor <clears throat> just come forward a little bit more. They just they're a little bit a little bit richer. You need those dark colors to have those light colors really show up as well. A bit of shadow on his rock there, a little bit of shadow underneath the greenery. Just a little bit of shadows underneath the foliage up front. Again, setting those down on the ground. Soften up those edges a little bit. These grasses in the front get some nice darks going on them. They're all pointing to my focal point, all point, pointing to my rooster. A little bit of a dark line underneath this roll of the rooftop. Just kind of gives it a little bit of shadow and a little bit more shape. I'm kind of looking to break up those big shapes, drawing that color down, kind of like uh, roof tiles or uh, shingles up there. Come back in with a little bit of cerulean blue. Again, I just want a little bit of color on those whites, those white trims going around the doors and things. Just want to knock them back just a little bit. Can add a little bit of cerulean blue to them. Cerulean blue works well for putting shadows on white areas. A 
a little cerulean blue, a little bit of rose matter. I want a real light shadow, so I really I want a real light purple mixed up. One that's real transparent. I want to be able to see through the drop shadow or the shadow, the cast shadow created from uh, the sun hitting the rooster. Come in behind him, nice and light. I'm gonna try to keep this nice and light, creating that cast shadow up against the wall. That really makes this look lit. As soon as you can put those cast shadows in, the viewer knows that the sunlight's coming from the right hand side, hitting the rooster, and then he's casting a shadow onto that wall of the chicken coop. Once I get it in there, I just kind of bring my paper towel and I just kind of blot it back a little bit, just, just to knock back the intensity a little bit. It just looks like it's that shadow is sitting against that wall now. A few more little shadows in. A few little darks in here and there. Just gonna let that sit for a second and come in with some uh come with a little bit of my yellow, a little few of my darks, just adding a few more little darks in here. Knocking back the roof line just a little bit. Come back and use a little cerulean blue. Want to come back in over those whites a little bit. Just knock them back just a little bit more. They're on the shadow side, so they're not quite as bright. Anything else I need to do here? Start with my small brush again. So my number five brush. Nice. Get a nice point going on it. And I just want to dark, add a few more shadows. Again with my shadow mixture of cerulean blue, that rose matter genuine. Just want to create that light purple color. It's creating a little bit of a shadow of the bushes. They cast a shadow up against that wall as well. Let's grab a little phthalo blue, small brush, a little bit of alizarin crimson, get that dark, dark purple going. My paint's getting a little bit thicker now. Every wash just gets a little bit thicker paint. So I think I need a little bit smaller brush. This is my signing brush. It just, it, it's like a one point brush. It's real, it's got a real small point on it. I'm gonna put his eye in. Just give him a nice, rich, dark eye. That real small brush. And just I can fix up some of those edges a little bit, make him just a little bit bigger, darken up that base of him a little bit, darken up around his cape. Grab some more of that dark with my number five brush. I'm just gonna darken up that, darken the door a little bit. Again, I'm just trying to get that dark bounced around a little bit. Just helps lead the eye around your painting a little bit. Up in that very top notch of the roof, I'm just going to add a little dark there. A little dark into my windows. Just adding little bits of dark. Little shadow under the under the windowsill. 
to bring that dark out a little bit. Again, it brings the eye up to that point up there. And it really brings out the light of that tree as well. It looks nice and lit up against that dark of the roof. Just soften these lines up a little bit. Pull off that one edge. Have a hard edge, then a, a softer edge. See, I don't clean my palette too much. I kind of let colors just mix together and I just, uh, just mix in the clean areas and a few more shadows. Just breaking up the shapes a little bit. Everything's looking pretty good. Let that sit for a second. Not sure there's too much more I need to do. Getting fairly close here. I'll take my signing brush. Nice rich dark color. These are my Lizard Crimson, a little bit of Thalo Blue. All my colors I've mixed up there. A little bit of Thalo Blue, a little more Thalo Blue. A little bit of Lizard Crimson. Make a real rich dark. I like to sign my name nice and bold. I'm lucky I have an easy name to sign. There you go. Don't think I'm going to do too much more. I like the way it looks.